Hey there, this is Math 8, Unit 4, Lesson 8 on how many solutions. And so we're going to solve equations with different numbers of solutions today. And that's going to be our little activity. So first of all, it says consider the unfinished equation 12 times x minus 3 plus 18 equals blank. Match the following expressions with the numbers of the solutions the equation would have with that expression on the right side. Okay, so let's take a look at this here. There's a couple ways we could consider uh, doing this problem. First of all, um, we could um, rewrite this if we, if we chose to. We could say, let's distribute this out. 12 times x is 12x. 12, 12 times a minus 3 is a minus 36. And then we have a plus 18. So negative 36 plus 18 can be combined together to give us 12x pull, um, sorry, minus 18. Okay. Now with that 12x minus 18, I don't see that as one of my options over here. I see everything having something factored out. And so I'm going to go ahead and factor a 6 out of everything here. Okay, because 6 goes into there two times. Okay, and so we have 2x. And 6 goes in here three times with so 2x minus 3. So when I look at this one here, A, I can see that that matches that one right there. So this would be something where there's infinite solutions. We would say all solutions for this one because it can go with any value of x. <laughs> when I look at this one, 4 times 3, x is 12x, and then 4 times a negative 3 is a minus 12. So if I set that equal to what I have up here, 12x minus 18, what I can see is the 12x will cancel out, and I'm left with a minus 12 being equal to minus 18. That's not possible, so this is going to be a no solution problem for b. Okay, so A is an all, B is a no solution, and we do this one here, we have 8x minus 12, and we set that equal to 12x minus 18, and we don't have any problems here, they're not equal to each other, so it's not all, and it's also not going to cancel out so that it doesn't match, <coughs> so this becomes <laughs> a one solution kind of problem there, and you can solve that out to figure that one out, so this will be a one. Okay, now... In class, you had a teacher give you some cards, and with the cards, you have various equations, and you have to sort them into categories, deciding whether they're going to be with one solution, right, with one solution, with no solution, <laughs> or all, or what we'll call infinite, infinite solutions, okay? And so as you do that there, what you're going to discover is that there are five one solution ones, there are three with no solutions, and there's two with <laughs> an infinite, an infinite number. So that helps you sort them out a little bit, a little hint there to get that going. Let's take a look at number three, or section three. <coughs> for each equation, determine whether it has no solutions, one solution, or is true for all, okay? Which means infinite. If it has one, solve it to find the value of x that makes it true. All right, so let's take a look here. For this one, first of all, we notice that we have different x values here, 6x, 7x, and different whole numbers there, okay? This is set up to be a one solution type of problem. And I could prove that by solving it out. Let's write it up for here. 6x plus 8 equals 7x plus 13. Okay. And I can subtract 6x, subtract 6x. So that x equals minus 13, minus 13. 8 minus 13 is 9, negative 5. And my one solution is going to be x equals negative 5. My one solution. For this one right here, I have 6x plus 8 equals, and let's distribute this. This becomes 2 times 3 is 6x, and 2 times 4 is 8. Notice that I have two expressions that are identical, right? So not only are this is it going to work, and these are equivalent, this is going to be one that has an infinite number of solutions here. Infinite, right? Because I can put any value in there for x, and it's going to be the same answer on both sides. Over here, I have a 6x and a 6x. Those can be eliminated. So now what we're saying is that 8 equals 13? Mm, I don't think so. So we would say there's no solution on this one here because it just wouldn't work. 8 will never equal 13. Okay? We're going to continue to do this on the ones on the back side here. Numbers 2, 3, 4, and 5. Let's take a look at a few more of these as you go through them. Okay? So we have on this side here, we can multiply everything by 4 if we chose to. If we multiply everything by 4, this simply becomes 12 minus 4x. 
and then that's going to equal 4 times 3 is 12, and 4 times minus x is minus 4x, and that's going to match. We would say that works for all, or infinite, or lots, or however you want to say that. It works for lots of values of x. For this one, though, we have, um, we can actually move things around. Okay, we could put an, add an x to both sides, and that makes us have 2x. We can add a 3 over here, and we can say it equals 6, and we divide by 2, x equals 3, and we have one solution there. Whereas this one, <coughs> notice I have a positive x and a positive x. If I eliminate those, I have two things that are not equal to each other, and so there's no solution there. Not going to work. For number 3. Okay, similar idea, we can combine things. Negative five and minus three is a minus eight x, right? So that's matching that one there. Minus eight x plus two, eight x plus two, it's all the same, so that's gonna be in all solutions, infinite solutions, lots of solutions, whatever you wanna say. Here, I have a negative eight x, so that matches that one. So I can eliminate the negative eight x, but will we say negative four equals two? Nope, not gonna work, we'd say none there. And over here, we have a negative 9x minus 2 equals a minus 8x plus 2. And this becomes a situation where if we could solve it out, we're going to get one solution. And we end up with 17x equals 4 and x equals 4 over 17. Something weird like that. All right, on this one, let's take a look what we have here. We can distribute 4 times 2 is 8x minus 8 plus 2 equals 4x minus 8. Okay, <coughs> so <coughs> in this case here, because I have a balance of x's and it's not perfectly balanced, I'm not going to eliminate anything. We could solve this and have one solution, no problem there. On this guy, when I write this out, I have 4x plus 4x minus 6 equals 8x minus 8. Okay, so I have the 8x, 8x. Again, those go away, so we're left with minus 6 equals minus 8. That's not true, we would say none. On C, we have 4x plus 4x minus 3 equals 8x minus 8 plus 2. So here's our 8x's, they're gonna be like, kinda go away, right? Not gonna work there. And we'd say negative 3 um, just right here, 4x, 4x, minus, oh, minus 6, sorry, minus 6. 2 times minus 3 is minus 6. So, yeah, minus 6. Negative 8 plus 2 is also minus 6. So everything matches 8x, 8x, 6, and minus 6, minus 6. So we're going to have lots of solutions for that one right there. Uh, number 5, we have x minus 6, and then plus 9x equals 10x plus 6. So I have different, uh, actually I have the same x values, 9 and 1 is 10, so that's the same there. But I have minus 6 equals positive 6, not possible, we'd say none. On this one, we have x minus 6 uh, minus 9x equals 10x minus 3. Again, we can group these things together, but 9x and an x there is going to make it 8x, right? Minus 8x minus 6. So this is going to be a one solution one, the way that works out. And then finally, we have x minus 6 um, plus 9x equals 10x minus 6. So that becomes 10x, 10x, and minus 6, minus 6. So we're going to have lots of solutions on number 5. So just take some time to go through those ones and figure those out. Okay, now let's take a look at your lesson summary. <laughs> just type quickly here. So sometimes it's possible to look at the structure equation and tell if it has infinitely many solutions or not. So sometimes it's possible to look at structure and tell if it has infinitely number of solutions. Similarly, we can sometimes use structure to see if it has no solutions. So we can look and see how it's set up to see if it's going to work or not. The last move that makes it clear, sorry, we always have constant terms get moved around. The thing is we want to keep our equation balanced. It's powerful to help us solve equations. But sometimes you're looking at the, the structure can help us solve them a little bit faster. Okay, let's pause there and let's take a moment to do your homework and then we'll check it out together. Okay, so here's our homework for number uh, Number one, lesson eight. 
Lynn was looking at the equation 2x minus 32 plus the 4 times that equals 14x. And she said, I can tell right away there are no solutions because on the left side you have 2x plus 12x and a bunch of constants, but you have just 14x on the right side. Do you agree with Lynn? Okay, she says that there are no solutions. Well, that could be true. Let's see if we agree with her or not. If there's no solutions, that means that our constants are going to be different on both sides of the equal sign, and we're not going to have a, a solution there. So let's rewrite this one here. We have 2x minus 32 plus, and let's distribute here, plus 12x um, minus a really big number, right? 2,462, put that in there, 2,462 times 4. And we don't, don't really need that number, but we're going to put it in there anyways, just so we have it equals 14x. Okay, now when I group this together, 12x and 2x right away, we can see is 14x, and then we have 9848, 9848, and we're going to add to another 32, minus 9880 equals 14x. So what Lynn is saying is that she can tell there's no solution because we have a 14x here and a 14x there. Those are going to be eliminated, so you're left with negative 9,880 equal to zero. And that's not going to work. It's not possible. So we would agree <laughs> because <laughs> there's no solution for this problem here. It's not balanced the right way. Number two, Han was looking at the equation 6x minus 4 plus this right here, 2 times 5x plus 2. He says, I can tell you there's no solution because on the left side, you'll have 6x plus 10x and a bunch of constants, but the right, you just have 16x. Well, let's take a look here. We have 6x minus 4 plus, distribute, 10x plus 4 equals 16x. So we combine 6x and 10x make 16x, and then minus 4 plus 4 is 0, so 16x equals 16x. Now he says there are no solutions. Well, in actuality, there are an infinite number of solutions here because I can put any number into the x and because it's the same on both sides, I can have more than one solution. I can have tons of solutions. I can have zero, one, two, you name it, it would work there. So we would disagree with Han in his thinking there. Number three, decide whether each equation is true for all one or no values. All right, so let's see here. We have a 6x and a 6x. Those match, minus four, minus four. So everything is exactly the same, just the order's different. We would say it's true for lots or true for all values there. Here we have a 4x, 4x, those can be eliminated, right? And we have minus six equals three. We would say no values because you can't have those equal. And then finally, we have differences here. They're all different. We could say we're gonna have one value there. If we solve that, we'd have one solution. Number four, solve each of these equations, explain and show your reason. Okay, so A, we have three times x minus five equals six. Distribute that out, and we have three x minus 15 equals six. We'll add 15 to both sides. So three x equals 21, divide by three, and x equals seven. For number letter B, we have two times x minus two thirds equals zero. Distribute this out, so we have 2x minus 2 times uh, that is going to be 4 minus 4 thirds. So kind of weird there. 4 thirds equals, and multiply 2 times 0 is still 0. Okay, let's draw a 0. And then we're going to go ahead and write a 2x here and make that equal to 4 thirds by adding 4 thirds over there. Divide or multiply by the reciprocal. Multiply that by the reciprocal. And x equals 4 thirds times uh, one half is going to be equal to two thirds, and that becomes our solution for B. And then finally for C, we have 4x minus 5 equals 2 minus x. So let's add x, add an x, we have 5x. Let's add a 5, add a 5 equals 7, divide by 5, so x equals 7 fifths, and that's our solution there. So there's numbers 1, 2, 3, and 4, and let's turn the page to the back side. Just take a look at numbers five and six <coughs> before you wrap up today's lesson. All right, number five. Since the points negative two zero and zero comma negative six are each on the graph of a linear equation, is two comma six also on the graph of that equation? Well, what we want to do is a couple things. First of all, let's find and figure out our slope. 
our slope is gonna be our y value minus six minus our other y value there, and our x value minus our other x value minus two. So negative six and minus minus two is positive two, that equals a minus three. So our slope is minus three, okay? So we have a slope and we have some points there. So because this one also gives us a point, when we look, graph this out here, at negative two, negative two, zero, we have a point there, and we have zero comma one, two, three, four, five, six, we have our points like this, this one here tells us what the y-intercept is gonna be. So I actually could write it out in this form. I could say that y is gonna be equal to my slope minus three x plus, when x equals zero, y is equal to minus six. So instead of saying plus b, we'll say minus six, and now we have an equation to work with. So now, we can plug this value in and see if it works. If it gives me six as an answer, we're in good shape. So two times minus six, so minus three, sorry, times a, a two minus six is gonna be negative six minus six, which equals minus 12. Does that match that? You would say, nope, it doesn't match, so it's not a solution because it doesn't give us six as an answer. And finally, number six, it says the picture and triangle um, A prime, B prime, C prime is an image of this after a rotation. The center rotation is E. So we're taking this shape and we're just rotating it over here. What's the side length of AB and what's the measure of angle DE? Well, the key thing here is this. With rotations, rotations don't change lengths or angle measurements. That's the key thing here, is that the side length of AB is still gonna be, of AB is still gonna be the same. If that's nine, this will also be nine. If this is 45, this will also be 45, because lengths and angle measurements do not change with a rotation, okay? It never changes. It might change with a dilation, right? That would change something there, the length, but not what we're talking about here, we're just a simple rotation. All right, that's it for the day. Hope you have a good one. We'll see you next time.